I'm going to be honest, Brad, when we started this channel, penguin sex was probably at the bottom of the list of things I thought we'd cover, right next to the death of Keith Richards. <laughs> but yet, yeah, here we are. So today we're here to talk about the sex life of the Adelaide penguin, which gets busy so freakily and so dirtily that an early Arctic explorer refused to write about what they got up to in anything other than ancient Greek. I like it. Why ancient Greek? Well, this scientist's thinking was that if he wrote all of his findings about the kind of sex this penguin got up to in nothing but ancient Greek, only a gentleman and a scholar would be able to read it. I like to think that his thinking was that there can't be people who are both freaky perverts and Greek readers. <laughs> <laughs> not Greek, ancient Greek. Ancient Greek, not any yeah, old Greek. You know, like, the bastions of morality were the ancient Greeks. So they don't have, like, actual myths about their creation, the people they worship, like, having sex with people disguised as bulls and that sort of thing, do it. Like, Zeus never got to any freaky, crazy sex stuff, did he? <laughs> Zeus was like the most like sex mad god ever. Like he fucked a woman disguised like every animal he could think of. It's ridiculous. Why would you think like ancient Greek, that's a civilized language. Like they might have invented democracy, but they also had a god who fucked people disguised as a bull. Carl, I, I, I never thought I'd be saying this, but let's get back to the penguin sex. Fair enough, let's get back to the penguin sex. So this scientist was a guy called George Levick, who was an eager beaver to see how the Adelaide penguin bred and acted when nobody else was around. So he lived amongst them between the years of 1911 and 1912. Why was he so interested in their breeding habits? Well, no one had ever witnessed how Adelaide penguins had bred before, and no one would actually witness them again for about a hundred years. Shit. So George Levick was one of the first people, and probably like the last people in his lifetime, to see how these penguins got their fuck on. However, what Levick witnessed on that one year long trip to see how Adelaide penguins got their fuck on was so Monocle droppingly offensive to his early 20th century sensibilities, he was even hesitant to write about them in his journal. <sighs> so go on, Carl. What was so shocking? Well, for a start, the first thing that Levick saw that was quite shocking to him is that a lot of the penguins engaged in foreplay. Well, that's not that shocking. Well, it might surprise you, Brad, but foreplay is an alien concept to a lot of male creatures. <laughs> I'm going to guess you're going to get a lot of comments from women saying, yeah, <laughs> I can see why that would be shocking to a man to see that penguins of all creatures understand that getting your, getting your lover ready is a, good, is a good idea. It's a valuable, it's probably one of the most important parts of having sex. And for some reason, it's one of the most shocking when animals do it. But I just love the idea that these scientists are just watching these penguins like, wow, so that penguin's like, he's getting it. Before he gets to the act of the fucking, he gets his partner good and ready. What a weird concept. <laughs> That's what I like about it. That this scientist is like, foreplay? They're not just engaging animalistic rutting? What, what is this making sure your partner enjoys the sex? What about it? Play. Well, foreplay is for sissies. Real men go in, unload, and pull out. That can't be the only thing. Well, no, Brad, you should know that foreplay is just the beginning. And Levick witnessed that penguin seems to just have a lot of sex in general, and they seem to just have it all the time. Quite a lot more than you'd expect during breeding season for the purpose of breeding. But how would he know it was outside of breeding? Because well, not only did he witness them having sex with each other, the males, he also saw them just humping dead penguins. <laughs> what? <laughs> this isn't even the worst bit. Those penguins that he, he saw them like, he saw males humping the corpses of dead frozen penguins, male or female, that are just frozen to death and were left on the floor. Do you know what the worst part was? Some of those penguins have been dead, not for days or not for weeks but years. They're ready to breed and nothing will stand in their way. You saw male Adelaide penguins humping years old frozen corpses. Can you see why he just thought he went, maybe I shouldn't publish this. <laughs> I'm worried that this is gonna get flagged in 2017 on YouTube. Imagine what this guy was thinking like, I've got to get this published in like a book in 20th century England. <laughs> when the Victorian sensibilities are at their peak. It makes you think, like, 
this is a matter of scientific interest. That's the problem, yeah. In my head, what I see is I see it being like the Incredible Hulk and Dr. Banner, where it's like, on one hand, I have to do it for science. On the other hand, weird freaky penguin sex. <laughs> and it's like, he's conflicted. And he doesn't know which one he needs to do. He's like, should I be the scientist? Or should I be a gentleman? So what Levick saw those little penguins get up to when they thought no one else was watching actually brought up a rather interesting moral dilemma. On one hand, as a scientist, it was Levick's duty to report what he found to the wider scientific community. However, as a gentleman, it was also his duty to protect people from having to read about penguins getting their fuck on with other deader penguins. <laughs> You've heard of rock and a hard place, but I don't think anything is tougher than scientific integrity telling people about weird penguin sex. That's the toughest version of that thing that exists. And this poor dude had to make this choice. I'm going to say right now, even though we know that this thing has been studied, it is definitely something that happens, that I won't be able to find a clip of it. And you know that there is footage of that out there. The worst part as well, this happens a lot for scientists and they don't really know how to handle it. And the famous one is ducks. I think it's well known now that ducks are assholes and that if you're not familiar, like ducks are pricks. No. Down. <laughs> and we know now that female ducks are actually growing vaginas specifically to counter male ducks because male ducks rape female ducks so much and male ducks if you don't know have corkscrew shaped penises so female ducks are evolving to have corkscrew vaginas that go the other way, specifically to stop male ducks from having forced sex with them. So they'll only be able to do it if the female allows them to Yeah, do it. and ducks still do it. <laughs> so and they even have vaginas that end in multiple pathways, so the duck who tries to rape them can't get them pregnant. And wow. scientists, obviously, they're in a similar position, they were in a similar position as Levick, where like, they want to report on this, it's an interesting phenomenon, but it's really difficult to do, like, tastefully. So there's a story of a scientist who like, basically he observed a duck outside of his window just have sex with a dead duck. <laughs> and he watched it and he's like, I wonder how long a duck will go. And how do you report that in a journal? <laughs> so how do in you in ancient Greek, Greek, Carl. <laughs> how? You're like, you've got a feel for these dudes. Like this is a thing that's of interest to the scientific community, but how do you write, I saw a duck fuck another duck that was dead. How do you write that and not sound like a weirdo? Just sat there with a clipboard watching a duck fuck another duck. But you've got to feel for these scientists, haven't you? Because they have got a really difficult job. Like, we have to report this, but simultaneously, like, we have to do it tastefully. But how do you tastefully write about, like, penguin necrophilia? Well, I'm guessing as that guy did in ancient Greek. Well, that was the idea he came up with. He thought... Right, it's my duty as a scientist, I've got to report on this, but I don't want just weirdos anyway to be able to read it. So he wrote it in ancient Greek to ensure that only a gentleman and a scholar who had purely academic interest in the subject will be able to read about it. As Levick expected when he went back to the UK, he was only allowed to publish a PG-13 account of what he saw those penguins do. Meanwhile, the more explicit director's cut of his notes were only studied by a handful of experts over the next century or so. So how do we know about this now? It wasn't until 2012, a full century after he saw this, that a uh, curator at the Natural History Museum in the UK just went, hang on, got it translated and was like, oh shit, and then published the findings yeah. um, uh, posthumously, as it were. Is this online? Yeah. Okay. Of course it is. I'm expecting you to put many quotes <laughs> during this video about all the shit Levick saw those penguins get up to. I should put it in ancient Greek so only the gentleman can read it. <laughs> So if you need to smile today, just remember that in the 20th century, a guy had to write about the sex life of a particular penguin in ancient Greek because it was so freaky, he was genuinely worried that people would be offended. <laughs> penguins. Penguins know about foreplay. Oh, God, the thing is, they've got little flippers as well. So they're going to have to try really hard to bust out some moves, aren't they? <laughs> Can you imagine, like, if you were trying to get down and dirty with a girl and you had little flippers like this, and then you had legs like this, so what are you going to do? Those penguins, man, they must get, they get getting busy. I respect that. I respect any animal that makes do with what it's got. Oh, well, anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video, why not leave a like or comment below with what you think you would call a penguin-inspired sex move. Snow job. <laughs> Happy feet.
literally just slap it across her feet. Oh, this pink the newt newt. <laughs> do, you, do you reckon he says I'm gonna spray you with my pink goo? Oh. Right, Brad, because we're talking about animals getting all freaky, there's a clip I want you to find and put in this video. And it's the one, I think it's Bad Boys 2, where my Lawrence sees a rat having sex missionary style. <laughs> He's so impressed. He calls up Will Smith to tell him that this rat is Jack Hammering. <laughs> no, he's straight power driving them. Now, how is that information going to help me do my jobs? And this is for some reason in a movie about crime. Find that clip and put it in, because that's fucking brilliant. Done. They fuck just like us. I would like people to comment in the comment section with their favourite animal inspired sex move. Because <laughs> if you're talking about penguin sex, why not? Oh, man, there's some really fucking good ones out there. There's some good ones. <laughs> My favourite one. <laughs> there's, there's so many of these, and it's, all, it's been a staple of like hacky comedy bits for years and years and years. Um, but one of my favourites that my friend told me is the log flume. And that's where you poo in on a girl's chest. She puts her boobs together and then you pee on it and it goes down. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's an absolute favourite one. Oh my god. <laughs> because, you know what? Fuck it, this video's not going to get monetized. Uh, but my, another good one is the Charizard. Have I told you about this? I think not, you might like, You've heard the Charizard, haven't yeah. you? So you are having enough badges to control me, right? We came up with one that was the pterodactyl. It's probably, there's probably a variation of it in every friend group, right? But my friend did this. And for people who don't know, the pterodactyl is where, when you're in the middle of sex, you grab each corner of your duvet, and just flap your arms midway through sex and go, Aah! <laughs> And we were talking about this. <laughs> and you know what? It's another story about Adam. I'm gonna say his name, because that's what he's called. We told him about this, and he's like, yeah, I'll do that. I'm like, no, you fucking won't. Like, no, I will. And a couple hours later, him and his girlfriend were upstairs. <laughs> we were watching TV downstairs. <laughs> and out of nowhere, we just hear a massive thud and just a... <laughs> we hear his girlfriend <laughs> literally push him off the bed. So you hear the thud of a male body hitting the floor. <laughs> Feet stomping. <laughs> His girlfriend, you hear his voice like from down the stairs around the corner. What the fuck are you doing? You hear clomping around and then you hear someone stomping down the stairs and the front door slam. <laughs> About a minute after that, Adam comes in wearing like his t-shirt and it's all and he comes down and opens the door and we all just go, 